Hey there, people of the interwebs. It's me, Brandon Noel. Um, hey, before we jump into uh, this episode's book, I uh, just would like to remind you um, we can't do this without the help of supporters like yourself. Patreon.com slash Destiny Comics, where you'll get the episodes early, um, as well as, you know... Um, access to my art, the, you know, comic strips, uh, behind the scenes videos, uh, as well as videos of just my ramblings. Um, you know, uh, want to thank the people who supported our Kickstarters, uh, this year, uh, you know, for both Gumshoe Magazine 1 and 2, uh, you know, and, um, yeah, just thank you. Uh, and um, this, you know, again, patreon.com slash Destiny Comics. If it sounds like I'm rambling, I am rambling because it's like 105 degrees in my office and I can't have my fans on to record because it messes up the sound. So I'm just a puddle of sweat right now. I'm, there's just, it's just all sweat and um, I'm, I'm kind of losing it. So, uh, with that said, uh, this episode is, uh, Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. Uh, I fell in love with this book series. I went ahead, I read further on than just, um, what we were supposed to read as a book club. Absolutely fell in love with this series. It is one of the most beautiful and humane, it just, it's a science fiction series, but it's all about humanity. Um, and why humanity is important and why art's important. And, you know, you matter, I matter, the human race matters. And, uh, also beer matters, honestly, if we're being honest. So, uh, pony up to the bar. And, uh, this is our discussion of Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. Laugh has been described as a chuckle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, oh, the British guy, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah you know, that, that one. British teenager. If you feel the need to read it, check, check it, it out, out from the, the library. library. <laughs> I don't know. Support your local. A little long. <laughs> Told the parents, no. And we are the bookies to okay. the best doctor whose is John Pertwee and Tom Baker. For me, it's a tie. All the rest of them are like, okay, you guys are just trying too hard. For me, it's a tie between the third doctor, uh, John Pertwee, and um, Patrick Troughton. I like Patrick yeah. Troughton. Although I can totally see why everyone loves Tom Baker. So. I have Tom mm -hmm. Baker's awesome. That's what I grew up with. I remember seeing episodes when they were new. Wow. <laughs> Technically, we still see new episodes, too. <laughs> it's still coming out. Was I, you I haven't, Jeff I haven't seen any of hers. He, uh, we it, saw the last episode Justin and I saw was the transformation episode between when Peter Capaldi turned into her. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen any of the rest. Of she is great, but unfortunately, the writing around her sucks. Yeah, like she hasn't been given the, the best storylines. It's like, oh, that's like she, she, she is great. That, that's kind of sad. Yeah. she because in her first episode, you get the idea of like, oh, she's the engineer doctor. She's the doctor who's gonna build gadgets and get herself out of the yeah. thing, and then the they didn't capitalize doctor. on that at all. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. You and know. just just everything, but we're like, okay, this could have been better. <laughs> the last new Doctor Who episode I saw was the one with the kid had the had the. Are you my mummy? Are you my mummy? That's the only. Uh, that, I love that. I love that. It's greater. so good. The, and the yeah. end of that one is the best. Everyone lives. Finally, that was the very first one. Where I was like, ooh, I got chills watching it. I love it. Yeah. But you got that's the second half because the first half yeah. you're like freaking terrified, and the second half you're like. Oh, we fixed it. That was but the, damn. <laughs> that was literally the only time where I was like, "Kids, I don't know." That's kind of terrifying. <laughs> you know? My understanding. Ooh, Micah's with, with just the right age. The whole Jodie oh, Whittaker thing well, is that yeah, part of it had, had to do with the dress pandemic. Micah up is, are you like, my mummy? Like that yes. compounded oh, with, I, mean, I guess, the it. bad writing to basically give her like nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like they well the new showrunner. I was really excited because he wrote a 
really good well, episode of Star Matt Trek Smith and stuff series. And loves it. Oh, okay. Like the new showrunner wrote mm-hmm. Power of Three, mm-hmm. which is the one where Matt Smith like stuck with, with the cubes and. Yeah. And, you know, so I'm like, all right, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And then ever since he took over the head of the show, I'm like, oh, he does not know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't they just like they just announced that they're going back to a previous showrunner, right? Yes. Okay. Was it Russell Davies? Or? Russell T. Davies. Yeah. Yeah. He'd think it was a cool. He would. He wouldn't know. And like, I know not everybody yeah. loves yeah. him. Yeah. I, I, I love his work on the first series. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, the Russell T. Davies is a diehard. Did you ever listen to Chameleon Circuit? I heard some other music. Did you ever hear his speeches? I think I've heard the doctors. Dying. No, not that one. No, I'm talking about the whole thought. Basically, it oh. takes you through the Jack history would think he's a villain. He would think he's a bad guy. Oh. Awesome. Jack yeah, yeah, likes the villain. Very, towards like, the end of that villain. song. They, they like to dress up as Darth Vader and be the bad guy. His favorite that, superhero was the whole president. That's just crazy. I only hope <laughs> it doesn't get messed up by Russell T. Davies. That's like, holy crap. It doesn't get messed up by Russell T. Davies. It's not just mudsling. That's space and time mudsling. My favorite, my favorite Marvel during all those movies was Thanos. <laughs> I know. Well, they gave Thanos an actual character arc. He wasn't just a mustache twirler. Yeah. No. I, don't know, I don't know what they're going to do with the, uh, what is it, uh, series four and on. Um, the that. big bad is uh, the Kang the Conqueror. They're doing Kang. For what? She guys watched the Hulk Legend of the Ten Rings? I enjoyed that one a lot. Yeah, I like oh, Chi-Chi. Oh, yeah, that one was awesome. It's yeah. really good. I really enjoyed it. But phase four, though, has been very... Phases, that's what it is. Yeah, because... Yeah. Phase four is just about to end, and just the whole thing feels very disconnected. Whereas, like the first phase, oh, we're building up to the first Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. The yeah. second phase, oh, we're building the Thanos storyline. Third phase is the end of the Thanos thing. Mm-hmm. Fourth phase has just been very like, like, yeah. like, yeah. like there's no thread. There's no. They are connectivity. grabbing a yeah. story to try to make money so Disney can make their stock go up. No, well, I, I give them more credit than that. I don't. But it's just, I was, phase four came, came out with She-Hulk. Hey, first off, Dude. She-Hulk's amazing. <laughs> uh, Justin and I watched, and Mom watched the episode, the first episode late yesterday. It was good. I liked it a lot. And it's very much on par It's very with much with the, comic. the original comic. I was going to say, yeah, the mm-hmm. comics themselves are the original She breaks comics. the fourth wall in the comics. She's yeah. funny. There's a lot of humor in it in the comics. Some people are upset about that, but if they read the no, comics, they'd be like, it's oh, the George, it's the points. George Byrne She-Hulk run. It's, it's, it's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, we really liked the first one. I'm looking forward to the rest of it. The other thing to consider about season. Phase 4 is that it's the first phase that they transition to TV series instead of just movies. Yeah. Right. So that right there is a huge change compared to what everyone's been used to for the right. past 10 years. Right. Right. You know? My problem is Phase 4... Where's the Fantastic Four? You end right. on Fantastic Where's Four. Where's the X-Men? I talked to Sony. Well, they're working man. on they're that. They're actually working, working on that. On that. Yeah. Yeah. Supposedly. Yeah. Supposedly. They got some... Although I will say, John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, I'm no. fucking down, man. No. I want it. Why not? No, okay, ten years ago, the, the artist of Fantastic Four was asked who gets to play Reed Richards. And he said, George Clooney. And ever since then, I've had George Clooney. Because when... When, no, even now, I, even now you get George Clooney, <laughs> because when Reed Richards walks into the room, yeah. everyone shuts up. He is, he has that charisma, he has that authority, he has that that star power. I see what you're saying, but that wasn't the case with the previous Fantastic Four no. movies. You know, no. it was a good actor, and I'm not just saying this because people have said I looked like him. <laughs> <laughs> but like he didn't have that kind of I see presence, where you're you know? coming from yeah. now, yeah. I've been told that. So I don't see it myself. No. no. You get no. George. George. I agree. No. He, I mean, he wasn't even the best Batman. Well, how do we expect him to be no. the best Reed <laughs> Richards? I'm sorry. <laughs> and I like George Clooney. One Fine Day is a great film. He I should love not it. Have but been come on. Batman at all. A chick flick. I don't expect no. you all to know that. It's okay. Well, what do you mean? I expect you to know it. No, we're bitching about nerd stuff, Brandon. No, okay, so half the show. Sorry. Okay, so 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 one of my roommates in college, I'd never seen it, and she had it, and it became our we need to relax and take a nap movie. We'd put it on and just lay down, and we wouldn't always finish it. We'd fall asleep, but it was just like I don't know. This just the oh my gosh, we just need to disconnect from everything. What movie was that? One Fine Day. It's a chick flick. I don't expect you to like it or even know anything about it. It's Michelle Pfeiffer and George Clooney, mm-hmm. and their kids go to the same school. 
he's got a big he's a reporter he's got a big thing he has to get taken care of that day she has a big presentation she's a architect designer she has a big presentation and his his wife just got married and the babysitter who's going to watch the daughter his ex-wife obviously oh. on the honeymoon um it, it couldn't so he so he gets awakened he gets his daughter suddenly dropped off for the week and he's supposed to get her to a a field trip well they both missed the boat and so now they've got a dad and his daughter and a mom and her son and they both have big presentations and even though they don't necessarily know each other or like each other whatever like she's friends with the you know ex-wife like they you know would anyway they end up having to kind of rely on each other to watch the kids for different times throughout the day and you know it's just it's a really fun can you watch it for this time slot because i have this, this presentation and, 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 and then yeah, you know that's kind of what happens you know and 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 his daughter wanders off <laughs> at one point she's like he was so great he took care of my son she's like talking to someone like i know i've lost his daughter and it's just it's just really it's a fun thing it's michelle cypher i like her it's george clooney i like this did it end up being one fine day it was one fine day everything worked <laughs> out they fell for each other at the end it's a chick flick of course and the last line in the movie is boy this was one fine day roll credits was it a one fine day <laughs> 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 That's the family guy. Thank you, Lewis. Like, <laughs> I love it when they use the title of the movie in the movie. Right? Bat credit card. I'm not over the bat credit card. <laughs> right, I'm not saying he was a good Batman, but I'm saying he could be a damn good Reed Richards. Wow, that was a sudden switch from yeah. family guy to, oh, back to the conversation. <laughs> like, there's right. no break Maybe. at all. But watch one by these. Okay. Okay. So, all right, we are the. <laughs> oh, are we starting? We're yeah, recording. We're recording. Awesome. Yeah, we're trying to start. Almost yeah. nine, nine minutes, minutes in. Nine wow. Minutes in. This is all preamble, and one yeah. day it's going to end up on DVD. Oh, one fine day. day. It'll be a fine one, day for all. One, one fine, fine day, day for all. Wow. <laughs> I've been recording since Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we are the bookies. I'm Brandon Noel. I'm Justin Stallard. Bonnie Stallard. Wayne Abraham. David McFarland. Louis Lopez. Aileen Noel. And uh, this month we are reading Callahan's Cross Time Saloon by Spider Robinson. Uh, Wayne, this was your book. You want to give a quick plot synopsis and, and why you put this in the hat? I put, put this in the this hat list. because it is a favorite book of mine. I, I enjoy Spider Robinson's writing. Um, it is actually a short story anthology of nine different stories, but they they all take place at Callahan's place and um, it is the kind of place that you find it if you need to find it and uh, it doesn't right, always sorry, sorry. just wow, you know it's mean. not just you know oh that's a bar let's stop there because mm -hmm. it's the outside of the building is very nondescript and doesn't have a sign on it or anything and and uh, it's got a group of regulars and there are newcomers that come in on the stories and it also seems to be a nexus for time travelers and aliens and things like that that show up uh, out of the ordinary type thing and uh, I I enjoy the uh, the characters in it the regulars uh, and their their interactions with whoever it is that came through the door that day or that night and uh, so I recommended it I mm -hmm. think this is the first anthology in what four years have we? What other anthology have we done? Are the, uh, screw no, tape letters? You just say the whole time we've been doing this. Yeah. I don't think we've done an anthology. We, we yeah, haven't done an right. anthology no. at all. No. We've had some random books, like. But, uh, but Callahan's was was first was first published. The stories were first published in like Analog magazine, so. In pulp uh, form, like a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 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 pulp form, but. They, you know, all the stories take place at Callahan's place, and so it's like you know the setting. The setting doesn't change across the book, so just the the different events that happen in the stories, and so I liked it, and I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. Brandon and I have a theory. We think you wrote it. 
Because <laughs> it's a lot of jokes and puns that we could see you <laughs> writing and coming up with. They think you're secretly Spider Robinson. Yeah. What they don't know is Spider the Robinson is the, the one who broke you. I mean, <laughs> made you. Even the way the stories are delivered reminds me of. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is. Yeah. Spe- specifically, the character of Doc. I know we'll get into more later, but I, I think either you are Spider Robinson and wrote yourself in, or you knew Spider Robinson and he wrote you in. No, it's a mantle like the Dread Pirate Roberts. It goes from one <laughs> yes! to another. Yes! There we go. That's like, ball. it just it is you now, and then later <laughs> on it'll be Bonnie. <laughs> no, I'm not that petty. I hope I'm not that petty. It's <laughs> kind of funny of you to say you're not that petty. <laughs> So that's why that's why I picked it and suggested it. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So you likes, start favorites, off. likes, favorites. Oh, favorites and likes. I, let's see. It's time traveler. Centipede's dilemma. You can say just the whole book if you want. Right. Yeah, well, he took the, notes. Yeah, the, I, I I took I took notes. Um, you know, one one of the story. It's not the best story in the book, but it's a memorable one and one that I found funny and stuck in my memory is the one titled "Just Dessert," where the practical jokers come in and <laughs> they have a hot water bottle full of beef <laughs> stew and they pretend barfing all over the bar, and then, and then the two buddies that came in get spoons and start eating it up, and they empty the place. Almost empty it, yeah. Almost empty the place, and uh, they leave, and everybody is furious except for Doc Webster, and he's like, he's just in there shaking his head with a big grin, and what are you so happy about? He says, oh, I've seen that one before, said, while they were waiting for the shock value and fishing for their spoons, I just sprinkled a little epicac powder on it. (laughs) And it doesn't go into an explanation, but that's the stuff that they use at hospitals to induce vomiting when mm-hmm. you need to have a patient do that. All right, so oh, yeah. I, I didn't even know what that was, so yeah. it just went whoop, and, yeah. it right. mean, and it didn't mean anything to me. I only knew of what that was because of my little bit of a medical background. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been lost. I forget. I, I only know because he's told me what Epicac is before. Yeah. I forget. I heard about it somewhere, and I don't remember where. I heard about it. That's the only, like... Whatever that random yeah. reference was, I was like, there oh. There was an episode in Family Guy where they uh, have a bet to see who can hold it down the longest after drinking oh, a bottle yeah. of expired oh, I hated that scene. I hated mm-hmm. it. I don't like puke. The yeah. true story, I'm listening to that on the audio version, that story, on my way to work up the mountain. So I drive up a mountain to go to work. I had to pull off to the side because I almost threw up. When the two guys threw up on the bar, like, it just... Start eating, yeah. Yeah, it, <laughs> It got me. It got, I was like, uh, you know, yeah. I had to pull Are you sure off. it wasn't the curves going up to <laughs> Maybe a little bit of that, but I had to pull off to the side of the road. I think probably my favorite story out of the set is the law of conservation of pain. Mm. Which one was that one again? The Sorry, one, the one with the while, meddler. So. The, the guy who comes from oh, the future. The future guy with the, the, about the singer. The, the singer oh, who singer, yeah, has okay. a scar yeah, on her face and Bobby Joy. the sad Bobby music. Joy. Oh, yeah. Bobby Joy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's. I remember that name. He he comes to uh, metal and yeah. uh, it's sa- save her from the, the incident. So I, I, I finished this book a month ago, so I'm like, oh yeah, yeah I remember it. Okay, yeah. But that that one was was probably probably my favorite one of the the stories. Yeah. Although another one that I that stuck stuck in my sticks in my memory all the time is the centipede's dilemma. Which one's that? Why does that one stick with you? Dink 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 Fogarty, the the guy who comes in and he's. Oh, his the glass telepath. never runs empty because he makes the glass want mm-hmm. booze from the other glasses right. nearby, and he enters the dart <laughs> championship, and and he makes the bullseye want darts. Is that the one where and his brother? No, 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 no that's no. the one. The no, are better. And, one and that's the one oh. that he's, you know, everybody's like, and one of the fellows says, so what's it like? How does it work? And he's like. I don't know. I've never thought about it. So he starts picturing in his mind making the bullseye want the darts and all the darts go 
Foop, out of the dartboard, go, Foop, and he's wearing this heavy canvas hat, floppy hat. Right. And that's the, that's the only thing that saves him. Right. And after right. that, it's he's he's never <laughs> he's never able to use his powers because Again, yeah. because as soon as he he tries to, he starts thinking in his head, how does this work? And, and it goes towards him. <laughs> and yeah. everything will go towards him as he's trying to picture what's happening. There's they called Centipede's Dilemma because of the tale of the centipede where somebody goes, how do you walk on a hundred legs? And he's always just done it. And as he sits down and starts to think about how he does it, and he, he, trips, walk, he, can't and do he gets it. so yeah. flustered, can't walk anymore. So Right, right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I, I, yeah. It's been a while. It, okay. it just... You know, he he had it coming, and he got his comeuppance, but then he wasn't able to to use it after that to to mess with people, and uh, so and I can't remember at this point because there are several books in the series if he ends up becoming a regular or not, no. or that's the only time we see. Him. That's the only time we see him. Yeah. Uh, Brandon got hooked and read the series. So <laughs> I read out of like I think there's nine books. I read six of them. Okay. So, so theoretically, he could come back. Well, yeah, probably not. I probably not. The yeah, three books I didn't now. read were um, earlier in the series, and they weren't on Audible. Surprise twist! He comes in the last book. <laughs> so he's the one who's up running. He's spider mm -hmm. <laughs> But those those were were some of some of my favorites. I I really I really like the characters characterization of the regulars because they they come across to me as as real people, mm -hmm. you know, and and people who really care, which was kind of the point of Callahan's place. And I I like I like the the you know the rules. Every, every every drink is uh, is fifty cents, and if you have a toast, you walk up to the chalk line, make your toast, and heave your glass into the fireplace. I'm sorry, I don't have a fireplace for us to do that, guys. Mm -hmm. And if you Fine. if you uh, we just expect better than what does throw glasses in your house for? <laughs> you know, pick a spot. If you, throw, if you if you <laughs> throw the glass <laughs> into the fireplace. Then that's another fifty cents. So that's why everybody just pays with a dollar bill. And if you didn't happen to make a toast, then there's a cigar box of quarters at the end of the bar by the door, and you just pick up your change on the way out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Most everybody makes a toast, you know. Okay, Bonnie, if you don't have a fireplace, which corner do you want? <laughs> I can't imagine like how much he must actually be spending to buy new bar glasses every day, essentially. But he buys them in bulk, like. Yeah, yeah and, he, and he says they at actually one point that. that it's about fifty cents, but like, still, that's like what a hundred glasses a day or something. Yeah. <laughs> he probably gets a really good deal because he buys in bulk. Yeah. yeah. They don't have to be sturdy. They only last a drink. Yeah, that's true. That's he, true. He could get the he buy the really cheap ones that people usually <laughs> don't want to buy because they break too easily. Well, I know he cheats. Heck, he could get the prop ones. <laughs> spun glass. He's getting yeah, some spun sugar or whatever. You know, instead. So, David? Um, I don't really have a favorite character. Moment pun? Um, <laughs> no. The puns went over my head. I'd have to say that the my favorite story was the, was the, the non-violent... I guess you would the call alien them race. aliens that that were manipulating Earth. Oh gosh! Was it that's one I had unnatural the, I causes? Didn't like that uh, one. Yeah, that's one I had a problem with. Yeah, the Hitler guy. Mm-hmm. Well, they just they just do that in there for the shock value, because you, if you really read the the book, it kind of makes sense how stuff was manipulated over the years and how some stuff how how could someone back then think of such a thing that would really change the Earth so much and then it kind of makes sense that it was a higher alien power manipulating the earth that way yeah and they just they just put the the hitler thing in there just to just for shock value in my opinion well they did go out and start destroying the aliens so. well, yeah. well M mickey finn mickey said did. he was going to well that's what the earthquakes were yeah, yeah. that's what, why it started with the earthquakes mm. and then ended with the earthquakes and made, made sense oh okay that's what was going on 
Yeah. But um, this book reminded me of uh, the bar that my dad used to play pool at mm-hmm. when I was a kid. It was yeah. filled with time travelers? Huh? It was filled no, with time travelers? The, the, <laughs> no, the, the, the stories and stuff is just all the BS that drunk people talk about. <laughs> <laughs> That's all these stories are, is a whole bunch of drunk people talking bullshit. So they could be saying, oh, space aliens, this and that. And okay, it's just a drunk story. Because <laughs> they all, <laughs> that's you, all you they said, because you started reading it before I did, and you said, Cheers! Whoever made Cheers read this book. This is Cheers! Exactly. Because <laughs> exactly, or Cheer, I mean, the, the show Cheers. You have the regulars, and then you have the ones that wander yeah. in and mm-hmm. become that, regulars. This this book was either written after Cheers, or Cheers was written because well, of this book. But we looked it up, and the book was written first. So that's yeah, why so I, they, yeah. Probably, they probably created Cheers based off of this book. Somebody read it. Mm-hmm. Because most definitely, because they come up with all the all the BS stories in there. It's just so much a drunk. People no, just I can talking. imagine is Doc walking the bar and going Doc. <laughs> right? Copyright nineteen seventy seven. I don't, I don't remember when Cheers came out. I want to say after the seventies, probably. Yeah, but 80s. I don't know. Seventies yeah. or eighties. Late seventies or, like or early eighties. Yeah. Yeah, because it ran forever as into the nineties. And then I'd say the, the second story that I liked was the the priest and his wife that were caught in, oh, the, time in, in, traveler. in the in the prisoner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't really consider him a time traveler. Well, they talked about it. That, that, that was the title of the I know, story. Yeah. yeah. And they explained why he was a time know, traveler. I know. It, 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 it totally sense. makes sense because if yeah. you know nothing because you're nothing is new and then suddenly you're just like dropped into mm-hmm. that you're like whoa yeah he, like, spe- he spent plain, 10 years kind of no outside capsule, yeah. communication and yeah all those things that happened in that decade yeah and that was the first story that i that was the first story wasn't it no no no, no. no that was the second story, second story. first oh, story right. was the man the with the eyes, eyes. That's right. yeah. yeah it was i love that the characters though stayed yeah. Like Mickey Finn is in the first story, but he he returns, and and the the guy like you're talking about from yours, the time traveler, he gets a job, and so he's, he's a, there some nights. You see yeah, him in other he's stories. He's actually one of the bartenders. Yeah. Relief bartender. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like. To, sorry, I jumped in on that, but yeah. Yeah. Well, other than that, I mean, that, w- that was basically it. I mean, you just like those couple stories and. You yeah. you have a list of things you didn't like. We'll hear later. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you even have to ask. I know, right? <laughs> All right, Lewis. Um, the the time traveler story was the first one. I mean, granted, it's only the second story, but it was the first one where I was like, oh, they're actually going to touch on some fairly serious shit in this book. Yeah, no kidding. You know, because to be like essentially a political prisoner for ten years with your wife in basically total solitude. Yeah, that's, and you were a priest. That's he- yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> heavy stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the stories were like, I've heard. My dad's the one who suggested it. I've heard about this book my entire life. I pictured someplace in outer space, first of all. I pictured. <laughs> um, Hold on, the ice machine. I, I, I know, it's okay, I paused. I pictured uh, more aliens than there were. And, and because he, I knew about all the puns, I, I thought it was a comedy. This is not, this is a drama with puns. Like, none mm-hmm. of the stories are, are, most of them don't even have happy endings. They're only yeah. bittersweet endings. So it wasn't what I was expecting from I everything I heard I was going to say it's more life. of a dramedy, but it's kind of not. No, because there's, there's comic relief, but it's mostly, they're, all the stories are dramas. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, they're, they're really deep. They're really serious. They touch on a lot yeah. of life and a lot mm-hmm. of humanity, and it's, not happy, which is surprises me that it's such a favorite book of yours because my dad here doesn't doesn't like sad stuff. We, he doesn't like to watch dramas. He likes happy endings. I kind of had the same two two of the thoughts I had the same was I thought it was going to be an outer space bar. Yeah. <laughs> I also thought that um, it would be more funny. Like, yeah. Not more funny, but like you know. Happier. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought it was going to be because I saw the aliens, the aliens and stuff on the cover. On the cover yeah. so I thought it was yeah. going to be well, some and, kind of space and bar. And for some well. reason, because I've heard little bits of it all my life, of course, because um, it's one of his favorites. But I, I thought um, it was one of those that not only is it mostly only people who need to be there find it, but but I I, I got the impression it changed locations That's to got, yeah. where people needed it to be. Like that mm-hmm. one. 
diner in that show we watched that mm -hmm. only lasted a season and I can't even remember like the name of it now. Mm -hmm. But was Maybe anyway, that's what I was messing it up with. Maybe because I, I didn't watch I that show, know. but I knew of it. Because I, I, I don't remember a, a mm -hmm. single time in this in this book that it changed location. Right, but yeah. for some reason, uh, from I I thought that it did. It. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, this is a real solid location in America. This is not an outer space. Well, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> <laughs> funny story. I don't know if any of you read like the introduction to it, but apparently. The author got a lot of fan mail saying, where can I find this bar? Oh. Yes. And they thought it was a real place. Uh -huh. And to the point where someone somebody, actually somebody was like, hey, Callahan. they figured out it was supposed to be, I forget, like yeah. Long Island or something yeah. like that. Because he says and, Long Island. And he's like, I've been I've been every, every bar in Long Island. <laughs> and none of them are the bar from this. It was mad. Like, <laughs> like, like, doesn't this, somebody like, actually you know. create a Callahan's place that's like in further south? I don't you know. know. Um, I'm sure someone has with this in point. the forward he talks about how it metastasized online as that? a uh, web page. Oh, okay. Mm. Fan made web but, page. Yeah, anyway. So, so yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to just, yeah, go ahead. What no. were you saying? Um, I honestly don't remember at this point. talking about, yeah. Um, how it deal, dealt with serious stuff. Travel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Serious the, stuff, yeah. The sorry. serious stuff in here, like when it hits, it hits hard. And it yeah. kind of is, at least it was unexpected to me. But yeah. I got you know good relief with the funny stuff the puns the jokes the mm -hmm. stories that aren't serious and in those moments There's this reminded me a lot of um oh what is it the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy right or at least that kind of 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 story where it's like here's something weird and possibly apocalyptic but look a fish like right it, just, <laughs> it, it was so random at times and came out of nowhere and i love that kind of shit it, ma it makes me smile you know yeah um, right, I feel now anytime something random happens, oh look, a fish! A fish. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was good though. I liked it. Um, we can get into some of the dislikes, but I didn't really have that many. That's so good. it was good. It's worth a read. Yeah, mainly. Um, so I don't know. It's not a lot, but I wrote a couple just because I know in my head I'm always forgetting what I wanted to say until I'm like two people fat, like Justin will be speaking. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think my favorite story was the two heads are better than one. I don't know why I liked that one. I can't like point to it. That anything. one was a happy ending so, though. Probably like, because it was, it was a happier yeah. ending. Yeah. Yeah. Was that again? One where the, the, the brothers have telepathy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That and one was I, you, that yeah. one's probably the Jim only one with Paul a real McDonald. happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they kind of end up in the same body essentially. Yeah. 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 Um, they work together. But they're happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, um, I think the thing I liked most about the book were just the characters and the like. I liked the puns. I know there were a lot of them. I felt like there were so many at points to the point where I was like, okay, you you can put a little, a little normal dialogue in here, <laughs> but you could just have them say hi. hi yeah, hi. <laughs> I mean, that's you know. Um, but yeah, just a lot of the puns and just the general feel of the bars. It definitely was. I feel like one of those things where if it were a real bar. I would want to go there, <laughs> you know, just because oh, yeah. of the atmosphere. And I think a lot of people who read the book, who like the book, might feel the same way. Like, yeah. why isn't this a real place kind of thing? Although you'd be one of the only women to ever go to that bar. <laughs> I know. That's okay. Later That's on, okay. that changes. It I does. can hold one my time. own. <laughs> well, and he's, he's read more in the books. Oh, oh, he's oh six so nine. So, nice. so Rachel's but not the only one. I would go, and I don't know if you necessarily need to have a problem to go, but, you know, I... I I would hurt. go. <laughs> All right. But if you do, if it, yeah. it's a good place to exactly. you know, yep. deal and with it. I would love to be able to have the chance to throw a glass into the fireplace. So we, even if I don't have anything I'm angry about. It sounds so cathartic. <laughs> right? you know? yeah. I'm so sorry, guys. If I had a fireplace, we would have done that tonight. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you really shit the bed on this one, Bonnie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good job. You should have bought a house in preparation. For this book, I'm just saying. With a fireplace. Sure. <laughs> Belt one, I don't know. Um, I don't know when this is going up, but yeah, coming off in summer when right. I, as a teacher, haven't been working. Fabulous idea, guys. Right, right. <laughs> um, I have a note in here that I, every time Doc came onto the page, I thought of Wayne. I was like, uh, uh, Wayne is who I thought of every time. He was on there. I was like, oh, said Wayne. Wayne said that fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I couldn't help it. Like, the moment 
I, I was introduced to the character. I was like, okay, there we go. That's, like, I know that's this guy. Now. Yeah, I know this guy. <laughs> I had lunch with this guy really <laughs> regularly. regularly. I just had lunch with this guy yesterday. <laughs> okay, let's go, you know. Um, and I definitely feel like, for me, the characters and the atmosphere were what made it ten times more interesting like than just the stories. Like, mm-hmm. don't, worry, don't get me wrong, the stories were good, but it's all about the characters and just the general atmosphere of the bar that made me think... I would like this place, <laughs> that yeah. kind of thing, mm-hmm. and so that was those are my basic thoughts on on the matter. Mm. Wayne first told me about this book. I want to say somewhere around two thousand three, two thousand four. So it's been a while. It's been a while, and I just kind of slept on it and, and never read it, and I regret. Eighty five. Eighty five. Probably. I've been you know. hearing about it since I was a kid. So, <laughs> old enough to read. <laughs> the first since I was conceived, he's been talking about right? the, <laughs> the first three novels are all anthology, mm-hmm. and they're, it's combined into um, Callahan's Chronicles, and then after that, there's Callahan's Legacy, Callahan's Key, and Callahan's Con. I've read all those mm-hmm. since since this was drawn from the hat. See, I read Callahan's Lady. No, I, I didn't read Callahan's Lady. It's not on. Or Lady Audible. Slings the Booze. Or Lady Slings the Booze. <laughs> Lady Slings the Booze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah, those are not on Audible, unfortunately. I wish I had a mind to come up with those kinds of puns. Oh, it's, it's brilliant stuff. Um, and the the first book is good and lays really foundation, but once you get into some of the other stories. Like, I just got so sucked into the world. Um, like, it gets into some serious sci-fi trope, like the mm-hmm. mirror, the mirror universe, talking dogs. Um, but the, I mean, out of the, the nine stories we read, or that was mandatory reading. <laughs> you can't say mandatory. Yeah. It makes it so bad. It was, it was in the first book. Yeah. <laughs> That's what everybody was reading. The selected yeah. books. Yeah. The first book. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Maze Runner was mandatory reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, oh, Bonnie, I'm sorry. It will never die. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, it died. It died before it ever had a chance to live. <laughs> I think we've beaten that one to death. Oh, my gosh. No, we haven't. Well, you, know, <laughs> you know what's funny is uh, Maze Runner has a higher like listener count. I think it's because in all the other episodes we keep saying how bad Maze Runner. Is. <laughs> you were like, "Well, I gotta listen. How bad is <laughs> that? Bad? What are they doing that book?" I was, I was also, working. On, a lot of people have been looking, listening to the Maze Runner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I was giving him free publicity. <laughs> I was in the the school library because we've actually been in school for two weeks, mm-hmm. a little over two weeks now. And I was in the, the, the library trying to get the curriculum. We were trying to figure out what I needed because I'm covering a vacancy. But anyway, mm-hmm. I'm telling the librarian about <laughs> the book club and about the Maze Runner. Because I'm at a middle school. Maze Runner is popular among the middle schoolers. Mm-hmm. And the fact of the matter is a lot of students don't read whole books. So yeah. it's not the greatest book. It's poorly written. There are so many better books out there, but at least they're reading. Yeah, yeah. But I told her, I'm like, it's not that good. It's really bad. I said, in my book club, we now rate things on well, on a scale of Maze Runner to 10. <laughs> like, it's that bad. I'm like, go ahead and read it because the students are reading it. So you can find out what they're reading and recommend something better that they'd enjoy yeah. in the same genre. Yeah, <laughs> like the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely more interesting, uh, yes. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> out of the, the nine stories that, that we all read... Um, the the two I really like, I guess, is the the man with the eyes, the first one. First one, Mickey you know, Finn. Mickey Finn. To my profession. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, kind of like, okay, what you know, like that yeah. whole thing with, you yeah. know, the and idea of ten in a row. Ten in a row. Get. <laughs> get I don't know there if there's any left. Anymore. Or any anything's fine. Orange. Uh, orange diet. Fine. Yeah. Orange is fine. Not diet. Um, <laughs> but the. Um, the idea of like we have to get this man so drunk to save the universe <laughs> right 
Like, like that, that is clever. Is so that is literally the great. only time you'll ever see getting drunk as an actual like, solution. We need to get this man blacked out drunk in the next three minutes. Can we do it? The right? universe depends on us. Yes. You know, get out the, the, the funnel. We're going to make this happen. <laughs> You know, I like that. It's like some but, you know, it, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing I like about it is that it mench, kind of mentions him in passing, mm-hmm. and then it goes to Tommy Jensen's story. You know, yeah. where he he comes in and he makes his toast to smack. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah, damn, Tommy yeah. Jensen. I think it was before. Oh. Um, before yeah, the man with the eyes is the first man, story. Man no, it's the first story. There's the same story. story. They're, it's in the the same same story. they're in the same story. story. But I think the smack thing yeah. was before it was. Yeah, yeah because yeah. it it was in response to how the regular reacted to Tommy, reacted mm-hmm. to Tommy mm-hmm. in a caring, loving fashion that made. Made Mickey Finn. I made Mike, yeah. st- Mike you know, does, stand, yeah, mm-hmm. step and up and say, and and do his toasts yeah. and yeah. say, here's Too my many. problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Tommy's a regular. He keeps coming back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's one of the things that I love about the book mm-hmm. is that when you have a character introduced, they get mentioned again. You know, mm-hmm. when they when not not every character obviously yeah. like, but. You know the ones that that came and got fixed. That you read the story where they got helped. Yeah. They come back. You see them again, or you hear about them again. Or hey, I was just talking to Mickey the other day, and he's loving it up in Canada, or whatever. Yeah. You know, he comes back later in the you know. That's the, kind of regular. Right, but he moved away to Canada. But they so, still hear something about it. Right, right. And so that ma- it turns bar stories. But it turns him into a regular, and they they stay. You know, they come in and they stay. Mm-hmm. And um, you hear about them, and so it's not like just because it is all these different stories, but it's not just the regulars who were already there at the beginning. They keep adding people on, and and it's not like you never hear about them again. You still hear about them, you know. One thing I thought was kind of cool is you got to. I don't remember if it explicitly says it in the book. I don't remember, or if it was just kind of a feeling I got. But it seems like they all come while they have the, their problems, and then somehow they work through their problems, and then you don't really see them as much. He talks about it, it, it in that one that um, David liked so much, the yeah, unnatural causes, because causes. it's Halloween night. And, and, and a lot of people are with their families, and those who aren't, there's somehow they end up back at the bar. Yeah. You know, even ones that haven't been there for a long time, they're yeah. there because... Uh, you know, they think about it on Halloween or whatever. Was it? There was. It, it was talking. I literally just read it a couple yeah, hours ago. But so they, yeah. yeah, they come. They they, they come, come back and, visit, and, and the yeah. old yeah. regulars. On, yeah, yeah, on on holidays like Halloween. You know, yeah. Yeah. that's when they. You know, they. And it know, seems you, like theoretically, like if this were a real bar, that it's a place where you can go that for once actually puts the customers above. Oh, I just need more money for my business. Right, he you know, like, doesn't. Like if it go, yeah. if they come back, great, we're here for you. But if not, have a great life, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And we're glad that you worked through mm-hmm. whatever it is that you needed to work through, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, and like, I would encourage, like, I know some of you didn't care for this, but I'd encourage you to go further, especially with the anthology, because one the first three books, the first three books, there's a story in there. Once you get to Jake's story broke my heart like once you find out our narrator's backstory well it, it tells us in the it, first it one mentions it mentions it it mentions passing. it yeah. that mentions he it. his wife and daughter died in the car accident because mm-hmm. the brakes failed that he put in trying to save money oh, yeah. there's a himself l- yeah, i'm sure there's yeah, more yeah. to it i know but that's that's what they tell us in the first yeah, book that's the snippet they give us that's the snippet but when you get to the the actual like there's a story later on where it's the anniversary of his wife's death well, don't give it away you know but it, it that like is a brilliant moment that is a brilliant piece of writing it, spider robinson i have this is the only thing of his i've read he's a humanist like he mm-hmm. he gets to the the core of humanity oh yeah in a way that he gets people yeah it yeah. just i'm pretty sure he wrote that about himself <coughs> Because his wife died of cancer, and so did his daughter. Oh, I didn't know that. Damn. Um, People who've lived life that yeah. understand. You and know? He has horrible medical problems with him. Mm. 
Um, I didn't know that, but I mean... That makes that more heartbreaking when you get to yeah, that. Yeah, like that. There probably is some of that in there then. Like Anne Rice specifically wrote the interview with the vampire, I want to say after like the death of one of her children or something. Oh. Gosh, I wish that book had been better. I liked it. I, 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 such a disappointment. <laughs> We had that interview with the vampire. The interview with book. No, because I'd heard all. It, it still, it, it fell was off over. The it, 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 it no, it, <laughs> carry on. This, this book reminds me a whole bunch of bar right. stories that my dad would would tell and, and listen while we were going on air on Tuesday nights for pool league night. Mm. <laughs> well, um, I love the whole series. Um, the one thing I will end that like because I went on a deep dive. The one thing that surprised me the most is there's a video game. There's a point. Oh yeah. Uh, there's a point and click <coughs> Callahan's video game. It's been licensed for multiple TV and movies that somehow have never manifested. People keep trying to make something happen with the series. Mess it up. <laughs> you know, um, I'd actually like to see a TV show. What's the point of the video game? It's it's a point and click adventure um, where. You go through some of the backstory of some of the characters in the bar. Huh. You start off in the bar and then leave the bar to go follow the story and mm -hmm. then come huh. back. And mm -hmm. It would make a good show. We should call it Cheers 2. I mean, <laughs> Cheers 2. Cheers, Cheers, two. <laughs> Cheers <laughs> in Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> in space sounds better, but it's yeah. not really in Cheers space. Redux. Cheers Redux. <laughs> it's a sci fi Cheers. It is. Yeah. It is. So, Sorry. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> no, you're the one who said it though. Mm -hmm. Like a month ago when you not first started reading space. it. Not in space. Maybe no. think of no, you know, said cheers. No, no I'm saying it. The really original saying. Muppet show, the pigs in space. Maybe it's cheers yeah. in space. <laughs> no. I just think um I don't have a whole lot to say about this particular book. Uh, I I it was very well written, I will say that. But that's about all I have. I, I think it didn't really engage you? It didn't. No. I honestly, honestly had trouble staying awake <laughs> for it. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead. And he listens to it at work while he's mopping floors and things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to the long as you stay on task. That's uh, not the only time you listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Also, while driving. So, no. Okay, as long as you're driving. <laughs> driving. <laughs> not usually, no. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, it wasn't what I expected hearing about it my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and it, okay, it is across time saloon, not across space saloon, but I still, for some reason, thought it took place on an alien planet and not Well, the world. cover really lends itself, yeah. Yeah, because it's got three space aliens on yeah. it. You could also assume that's probably the costume for Halloween in that story. Maybe, yeah. Uh, well, well, maybe, but there was only one There green, was only one green yeah. guy, and he was furry. I, I yeah, get the yeah. sense that this cover is basically like, hey, artist, make a cover, we'll give you a blurb to work right? with, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's well, it. Well, the make problem with the space <laughs> aliens on it. There, there's a mirror on the... Uh -huh. And there was no mirror at the bar. He specifically didn't have a mirror. Yeah. Doesn't have a mirror. Rachel stared... She, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want people to be narcissistic. Later so, on, there's an, a story it where that that cover it talks has about an that. Andorian. A mirror just magically oh, manifests. Uh, oh gosh! Like they all walk in and d there's like a mirror, and they're Callahan's like, like, I don't know, I didn't put, I this, didn't here. put this in. You, you jokers <laughs> do this last night? Oh, we didn't do it. And I, it no spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't have to read that one. Um, I liked. I mean, there's things I liked about all the stories, but they were sad. I thought they were going to be funny. They were sad. And even the ones that had happy endings. Okay, the, I'd say the happiest one was the one with the, the telepathic brothers. That was the happiest ending. Mm -hmm. um, the time traveler one with the singer lady had a happy ending, but it was still bittersweet. Everything mm -hmm. that had a good ending, they were all bittersweet. Like, it wasn't exactly happy, but it wasn't exactly sad. I mean, the problem was fixed, but there's still a lot of emotion involved and and you know not not that it ever brought me to tears and i'm a major weeper so that's you know mm -hmm. unusual for me not to cry about something as i do but um 
I didn't in this book, but um, but it wasn't all like, oh, that was a great story. It was like, oh, well, I mean, they fixed the problem, so that's good, right? You know, like, that's how it felt. I was um, like, well, okay, that wasn't as, as sad as the Right, like, I liked like, the characters. Oh, well, I loved Rachel, because she, she, like, mm-hmm. you know. She dropped dead in the bar. She didn't. <laughs> I thought she did. No, she was she was mm-hmm. snoring. She fell asleep. They he, he ended up keeping her from dying, and they said, "Oh, we'll take her to the hospital and get her checked out." And they refer back to her another time. And she didn't actually drop dead. She did almost dropped dead, but didn't. But um, oh, the stories are sad because what do what do drunks do? They drown their sorrows away. Then yeah, half these people aren't drunk. Drunk most of the time. Well, that's what the a little whole bit. premise of our main characters drunk is drown your sorrows away, and then when you're plastered drunk, you're all happy. So that means your sorrows are gone. <laughs> our main character is the lead guitarist for the bar band. Like he's there playing guitar. He, he's not there to drink every night. Yeah. I did like that little banter at one point. It's like. What should we play? How about the one we've been practicing all afternoon? <laughs> all right. Yeah. They played their one song. One of the two oh, songs Oh, they want us to know. play again? I guess we'll play the other song. Like, <laughs> we have two songs. Awesome. Mm. Yeah, though, there's some funny bits, and there's some puns, and there's puns that I didn't get. Mm-hmm. Like I was saying before we started recording earlier, I was like, there's a couple times where it was, oh, and everybody threw their glasses into the thing, and I'm like, what was the pun it had to have been relevant for the time period that the book was written mm-hmm. but i have no idea i, I like, get the distinct you know? sense that this book is very much a product of the 60s and 70s mm-hmm. yes. like not yes, just definitely. that's when it was written but like yes. so heavily yeah. influenced yeah, by yeah. Them, i mean like certain know? puns the ones that are on play plays on normal words and normal things yeah i get those mm-hmm. i mean i even thought of a few he should have added but um <laughs> you know yeah i got rachel she was smart i liked that she was quick i liked that about her but um, the a few of them I didn't get, and then I was like, well, okay, I, I have no idea. I'm I can't really remember them now, but I remember reading there was a couple, a couple other, that yeah. like I was like, oh, I I know what that is, but nobody else will know what that is nowadays. <laughs> like, <laughs> so maybe you got some of the ones I didn't get. Probably. That's fine. <laughs> but I'm negative though. Well, yeah. no, no, I'm just saying like it wasn't necessarily negative. I just made me feel like oh well, I didn't get that um, but I, I liked Rachel I liked I did like the one with the singer um, it made me wish that um, the auto guy you know that they'd actually had like some woman record a song and do it because the auto guy does a sing songy voice thing but I'm like man I want to hear this song <laughs> See, I was wondering about you know? that because I have I have the book in front of me and at that yeah. point I'm like this is one of the problems that books always have when it comes to musical sections. Right. There's no way without having the music notes literally in the book and someone can read them yeah. for the reader to know, oh, this is the beat, this is the note, this is the lyrics and how they're sung. And, and, I, and I wish, you know, like I would have liked that. That would have been Otherwise cool. it just looks like really nice poetry. You right, know? <laughs> right. Yeah, I had that problem this week when I was reading Charlie and Chocolate Factory to my students. It's all the <laughs> Oompa Loompa songs. I'm when trying to do a sing get, song. When you cut so down sweet. That um, isn't. Okay, so the new movie did better than the old movie on that because they took the lyrics of the straight from the book for the songs. The Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo one. Those aren't the lyrics in the book. Oh, Just so you know. Cares. I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said it, because I care. Um, oh, I let me stuff. see. What do you I get know. when you got so I'm looking at the top. Yes, I something, know. Something, something, um, something eats or something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> he is eating as much oh as an elephant eats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the meddler was probably my favorite. That one, um, the con- law of conservation of pain, pain. That one was probably one of my favorites. I liked, the, I liked the first one, the man with the eyes with Mickey Finn. Again, like I said, I like the characters show up again and again. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, it was enjoyable. I, it wasn't what I expected hearing about it, but it wasn't like it wasn't like it fell off its pedestal mm-hmm. like um, the Interview with the Vampire did. I was okay with it. It just was different, but mm-hmm. it was good. I liked it. All right, dislikes. Your turn. Dislikes. Never mind, <laughs> David. <laughs> <laughs> what well, is there anything? Do you, is there anything you didn't like, Dad? <laughs> In this first book, no. Okay. Okay. Not really. Is there are the some there's some things that happen two or three books down the road that pissed me off. Okay. Wow. Fair enough. But not in this book. Okay. I can agree with that. All right. David, get out your long list. Let's hear it. 
I was, it was really hard for me to get into this book. Yeah. Very hard. Same thing as Justin, it didn't really engage you? No, no. because I see how you guys see the comedy in this, but I grew up with this with my dad being a drunk since I was a kid. Mm. Right, so, so you I saw can, that side. I, I see the negative side of it. I don't see the humor in this at all. That all mm -hmm. to, me, to me, this whole book is a whole bunch of drunk talk to me. Mm. And, yeah, and, I, and, and then when my dad comes home screaming, roaring drunk, throwing shit around. Now, would this it be fair to say it's because of what you bring to the book and not necessarily what the book is? No, because I could read the book and, and to me, yeah, okay, they're trying to make it interesting by telling stories and about how people congregate at a bar, but to me, it just sounds like drunk talk. People, all the bullshit stories that people make up while they're drunk sitting at a bar. Right, but in this instance, it's supposed to be true. Trying to one up the other people. But how can I, you can't even, I mean, okay, I can see that, but it that just doesn't, it doesn't ring with me. Okay. And the, the puns, you guys know me, I, I don't get puns. They just go right above my head. So Nothing yeah, goes over my the, head. The, the, the ones, <laughs> the ones with, with words, like how you were saying mm -hmm. I got, but like all the rest of them, I'm like, oh my God, no. Yeah. This is this is totally time piece. It's stuck in the 70s and it stayed in the 70s. <laughs> um, yeah, I can agree with that, that one. And... I probably would have liked the the song better if I if I even knew what all that jibber music jibber jabber meant. Mm -hmm. To me, it was just uh, okay. I don't even know what that means. Right. I, mean, I I read I read the words to the song, but I just I wasn't just to me. They're just, just words. Yeah, yeah. they were just words. It wasn't meaning anything to me. Right. Because I'm not musically inclined. Right. Whereas I'm a musician, so I wanted yeah. to know. Yeah, a musician, a singer, a musician or whatever, they're yeah. going to be able to understand the music jibber jabber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, I just, I just couldn't get into it. I mean, okay. I mean, I read That's the, fair. I read the, the whole book and everything, and you know, I liked a couple of the stories and everything, but not your thing. No, it definitely was not my thing. Okay, Lewis. Well, we. We touched a little bit on the the music thing that I brought up. It, it's one of those things where, like, I I adore music. It affects me on a personal level, mm -hmm. but I don't really play anything. I have a right. guitar. I don't really know how to play it. So when it talks about Same. Bobby uh, Joy going <laughs> from E minor to an A to a C, it, I I couldn't <laughs> tell yeah. you what those notes are in my head. I know. All I, I can know. do that on a piano, but not on a. <clears throat> all I can do is okay. So he changed his notes three times. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah to me, it didn't it didn't mean anything to me. It, did, it yeah. just didn't make any sense to me. Well, and it's not just the notes. It's usually a chord. So you're talking about three notes, unless yeah. Unless it's a seventh, but never mind. Yeah, it's, I don't it's, need to go into that. You're Sorry. Way <laughs> it's an issue that anybody that puts any kind of music or musicality into a book has to be super careful of because you're going to lose anybody who's not a musician. Yeah. 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 And that's yeah. like two, three Most fourths of, of people, your audience yeah. probably. <laughs> like. Yeah, not everyone's a musician. Um, okay. One of the things that stuck out at me as like a, oh, I don't like this at all was. Uh, some of the story of Tony and Steve, the Vietnam veteran guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, yeah. When he's talking about the the drastic change that he went through in Vietnam, and, and maybe yeah. it's just because the topic is taken a lot more seriously now than it was in the 1960s, but at one point, Tony mentions um, that he just oc like occasionally started raping Vietnamese people when he was over there in wartime and I'm like you just decided okay now I'm gonna rape people like right? how do you do yeah. that yeah. how do you how do you make the mental decision to just go okay now I'm gonna sexually assault these people like that to me is is such a incredibly fucking drastic change that I couldn't imagine doing it right I just couldn't Mm. So that was one of the moments in the book that I'm like, oh, I'm completely taken out of this story now. I just don't like it. I was washing dishes at the time, and I, I was not hearing every word, but enough that I was getting the gist of it. Mm -hmm. So it probably didn't affect me quite so much if, as if I had been <laughs> reading it. I would have been really pissed off like you were. And I was like, wait, what? Ah, I'm washing dishes. Okay. You know, <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to finish it, the book before book club. 
it was, and like I said, it, it's probably just that nowadays we take the subject of rape with incredible seriousness because it is right. an incredibly horrible and it, thing. And it you know? should have always been taken that way, but yeah, it so wasn't it, back th then. That's one of those things where I mentioned it was a product of the 60s and 70s because at the time they were just like, it's a bad thing. I'm sorry it happened to you. Let's go get Move pizza. On, like, yeah. let's go get pizza. Like, <laughs> Like, Pretty much. That's kind of how <laughs> it was, you know. It was up. it was seen more, more or less and, as like a woman's problem, and therefore and it's, not and, so oh, serious. Yeah. You know? Oh, and it's your fault. Yeah. Oh, excuse you. <laughs> so that that was one of the one of the very bad things about the book. But for the most part, I didn't I didn't dislike a whole lot. I will say it was a good thing that, or it, it was a good thing that the book wasn't longer than it was because given that it's short stories collected, the through line kind of wavers a bit here and yes. there, you know? Um, which which actually made it an easy read, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I, I didn't feel like I w had to slog through any points of this book. Right. Except for the one that made me mad. <laughs> right, that one. That, and I, that's one of the ones I listened to today, because it was one of the last three. Yeah. So I had three left. I'm like, I got two and a half hours, two and a half hours left. I gotta do this one. Clean, yeah. do dishes and cooking. <laughs> but there wasn't really a whole lot that I disliked about it. It, okay. it seemed like an easy read. With one big speed bump in the, the very end of it for me. Yeah. Maybe dislikes. Um, let's see here. Um, I think honestly the biggest dislike, and this is just kind of knowing my likes and dislikes, is I don't really often get into short stories. Not that they're a bad thing. I mean, I've read a couple short stories here and there. I'm like, oh, this is a, a you know, fun little story. I've written some short stories. I've written some short mm -hmm. stories. But <laughs> going through an entire anthology of short stories is generally not my thing. Like, I, mean, I used to I, publish a short story anthology. Right? Yeah. But <laughs> Wait, writing but it, they it would also... It wasn't really her thing. <laughs> <laughs> she hated everything. She hated every... No, no, no. Hated <laughs> every she liked story. writing it. Right. And, and they weren't all the same kind of universe either. Right. Yeah, that's and true. the other thing, too, I would agree with her on... This is probably the only only the second short story anthology I've read start to finish. The read by it's by the same author. It's all along the same theme. I have other anthologies that I've gotten part way through, yeah. and uh, they were, I liked the stories, but they're usually they're written by different people. Yeah. Like I have mm -hmm. one that's all mm -hmm. cats in space, and the stories are great, but they're all different writers in different settings. But they're all cats in space, and they're fun. But I, you know, I haven't read one in a bit. You know? I I don't think I've ever read a, a complete anthology of anything that's short stories like. As from cover to cover. Oh, um, she's editing it. That's different. <laughs> yeah, mm. editing is completely different. But, like, like, okay, I've got several short story collections, but I've read, like, a couple stories in this one. I've read a couple stories in that one. I've read, right. You know, I've never actually sat down and said, okay, I'm going to read the entire Grimm's Fairy Tales, you know, cover to cover. Or uh, I've tried mm. that. <laughs> you know? I've or almost or done it. I've never, I, I've never sat down and thought, oh, like I just the other day grabbed um, it was Alfred it was like an Alfred Hitchcock presents stories that go mm -hmm. bump in the night. I read one book, put it down. I'm like, okay, I'll come back to that later. Like, yeah. You know, I've never actually sat and thought, oh, I'm gonna read all these stories in this book because generally speaking, if I just want like you know little stories here and there, I'll find a TV show that's like okay, a different story a week like the Alfred mm -hmm. Hitchcock presents or right. okay different story I'll, I'd rather watch it than, than read an read entire it. book that's just different stories okay. uh, even if they're kind of connected in so a way. I shouldn't suggest I robot because <laughs> that <laughs> one is, that is a collection of, yes it's a collection of short stories it's probably the it's the first one I ever read yeah. start to finish of a collection of short stories they're all I'll about say, robots you know well, Isaac Asimov so it's not it short stories that I have a problem it's just I just generally don't if I yeah. want to read a book I'd rather be one continuous story from start to finish and again it's not anything against the genre just that's me personally you know mm -hmm. yeah. so going through this book is like wow I think this is the most short stories in a single book I've ever read <laughs> you know and, and another thing about this even though it is a collection of short stories they're a chronology to them. Mm -hmm. There is, but um, where a lot of yeah. anthologies, They're there complete aren't disconnected. Yeah. Complete yeah. disconnect. So, a in many uh, anthologies that I read, I just kind of well, that title sounds interesting, and I skip around. And right. Read Whereas it. here, like because the characters, um, once they've joined, they're part of it. You want to read in chronological order, or you missed something. Mm -hmm. You don't know who that person is. Generally, when Cheers. I 
read a short story that's in a collection. It's, oh, I just finished this book. It was a great book, but I don't want to jump right into the next, you know, Mm-hmm. fast-paced book so I'll just read this quick short story oh that was an amazing short story okay I'm ready for a longer book, book now yeah. <laughs> you know no I get so it so that's usually you know that's probably what saved me to be able to actually read the book was knowing that okay this story is coming to an end and I could put it down yeah mm. or else I probably I probably wouldn't have finished it yeah I think that is one thing that, that is a good thing about short story collections is mm-hmm. being able to do that yep um other than that, I think the only thing I didn't like other than that was just the fact that, again, playing into expectations, I expected happier. And mm-hmm. not that the sadness is bad again, just not what I was expecting. It wasn't what you expected, so. yeah. Go ahead. Um, Brandon hated it. That's why yeah, he read all the other books in the series. Because he read all six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was like, I, I, I'm finding, mm-hmm. he wanted to find out which the worst collection was. Got it, got it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which one would you hate the most? I mean, yeah. We're talking about book one. I know. <laughs> I'm kind of with Wayne where my problem is I have issues with stuff that happens later in the series. Yes. Um, they gave each other knowing looks. I think they know what... <laughs> mm-hmm. We might have different qualms. We might. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Off, off mic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I got sucked up into the world. Like I really liked it. Um, I mean, not every short story is a winner, nope. but there's a good one right around the corner. Uh, like Piter's story. <laughs> what? It's one of the other books. Okay, well, yeah. just, well stop reading your other book. <laughs> Focus. Well, this yeah. book, and one of the good things about that, um, like you were saying, is that Essentially, there's no cliffhangers at the end of each of the stories. Right, you can't, everything's resolved. You can't really do that if it's been originally being published in like a magazine, and it might be in a different magazine next time. So yeah. one yeah. story is its own self-contained little world. Yes. Mm-hmm. So it's very convenient. Yes. So yeah, I'll pass it on to Justin. Um, he didn't like that he had a hard time staying awake. Yeah, it, it just it didn't it didn't capture my fancy. Um, and I'm with David. A lot of the uh, jokes, a lot of the jokes and puns. um, (laughs) In some ways, I'm very literal, so uh, (laughs) puns don't usually work with me uh, unless they're obvious. You know. Yeah. Um, Like the ones Bonnie says, with with they're just a mix of words. Okay, I got that. But then when they start trying to have Um, an alternate meaning, I'm like, uh, okay, (laughs) next. But. uh, it was, I don't know. It wasn't a bad book. Like I said before, it was well written and it had good character development. But it just you wouldn't call it a favorite. No, no, it wasn't. You know, and, and, and safe to assume you're probably not going to read the other ones then. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's well, guess what? I have suggestions for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's going to be like a four. Four people group. Then. There, there's, there's, there's few books I, I've I've had to force myself to read to get to push through them, and this is one of them. You yeah, know. I'd have to say that as well. You know, it's up there with the. Great I mean, no, no offense to you, and I know you enjoyed it. It just wasn't my thing. It's okay. I I like because Justin gets it on Audible, so we share it on Audible. So sometimes I buy a copy of the book, but sometimes I'm like, well, why buy two copies of the book? We're already in the Audible version. Mm-hmm. So this one, I put on Mario Kart, mute the volume, listen to the book while I'm racing <laughs> on Mario Kart, listen to the book while I'm washing the dishes, listen to the book while I'm cooking. Mm-hmm. You know, I was reading get other things done at the same time. <laughs> I was reading this at work, and more times than not, I'm usually sneaking books into the bathroom and just sit on the toilet and read the book. This book right here, I would rather go back to work. (laughs) (laughs) Damn, bro. Holy shit, that sucks. Okay, okay. Serious question. Is it better or worse than Maze Runner to you? (laughs) It's better than Maze Runner. Okay. Okay. Everything's better than Maze Runner. (laughs) Well, I don't know. Maybe Maze Runner too. He he had me questioning because he said he'd rather go back to work. 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 (laughs) So that's the only reason why I asked that. He he didn't want to stab his eyes out. He just wanted to go back to work. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
just like, wow, I got better stuff I could be doing right now. <laughs> but, so I, I would say that I probably enjoyed the fact that it was on Audible and I could do other things um, <laughs> while I'm just to it. Multitasking. Uh, um, dislikes. I will... I don't know that I disliked that it ended all the puns, but I guess a little bit because I'm like, that must have been a time period one that I don't get because yeah. I didn't live back then. I'm not, well, I'm not old enough to understand this joke. I'm glad that um, uh, people are saying that because I, I do remember now that everyone's saying that there were a couple. I can't remember which ones they were. I, I can't either. But I remember thinking, I'm, I'm trying to grasp in my mind like, okay, you know, that's a pun. A bunch of now. glasses hit yeah. the hit the you know fireplace at the same time. I'm like. Okay, so somebody just did a pun, but I didn't get it. Yeah. How did they just win pun day night? I didn't get that one. Yeah. Um, I like I said, you know, I liked Rachel because she was good, but um, with her puns, I liked that she came in and outdid the doc. Um, things I didn't like, I, I don't know. I mean, there's certain parts I didn't necessarily really care for, like Lewis said, like that one. That one, I, I was probably my least favorite story actually. Yeah. Um. There was I didn't just, even remember the Vietnam one until he, <laughs> yeah, until he said me, it. Me well, it's the same one as the guy who was, was the aliens. It was your favorite story. It's in that same one that it's they were talking the about. Unnatural causes. Unnatural causes. The guy, the the guy was talking about Vietnam and the war and all his stuff, and then the, the other guy who wants absolution because he was Hitler, that alien guy, that's that same story. Yeah, I and, um, don't even remember. You don't remember that part. Like, I was reading like one story per <laughs> week. Yeah, um, I didn't like that one. Um, I didn't. Most of everything in there, I didn't like. Actually, that's the um, one I have the problem. Most problems with just because I'm not a fan of like secret lizard, the secret lizard people controlling the, the world. I just, yeah. I didn't. There was, there was a but lot. That's a lot. That's a. There was a lot in that one I didn't like, and that was one of the longer stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that story, Probably the longest. That story in and of itself was over an hour on the Audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that story, and that was my least favorite one. So, um, it's, but, a, it's an interesting sort of concept the yeah. I the idea that like humanity has been shaped in secret by this society of whatever whatever like mm -hmm. it's it's an it's a fascinating idea from a literary standpoint because right. it's so out of the box yeah. but i also yeah i didn't do not put any that was my least, that. that was my least favorite story mm -hmm. um that's i liked that I liked. <laughs> of course of course that was my least favorite that's the one you liked I liked the one, you know, the voice heard in Rama with, with the lady who walks in the bar who's smart and gets all the puns. I liked her. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Rachel crying uh, for her children. And I liked, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the the one with the singer and stuff, but there was, you know, things lacking. There were things I wanted more of in that, too. Um, but I, I, think that would I don't be, know. I just think... I think that would be better in a... In a more visual manner. Right. If well, you and actually see there's things playing yeah, the and hear it and singing it. I think yeah, I that would be a lot, lot better. better. Like, like mm -hmm. if someone were to actually succeed in televising this, you know, I, I would like, I would like, enjoy I would much, like to much see better than yes. reading it. Yes, mm -hmm. I think so it's too. It's possible nowadays. Yeah, and nowadays it, it might have be, been a huge yeah. struggle to do it in the eighties and nineties. I mean, but, yeah. You know, have because an episode could be. Uh, one of the short stories. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, the you, you might right even, here, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or a two parter on one of the long yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But um, so, so I could see how it would be good in that way. Um, like I said, I, I was expecting it to be happier. That didn't necessarily mean that I didn't like it just because there was a lot of sadness in it. But but it wasn't exactly an uplifting book. It was kind of, kind of depressing. I'm like, I got to put this down because this is We're sad. All doomed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, but I, I don't know. It was all right. It wasn't my favorite, but I didn't hate it. You know what I mean? It's definitely better than the other. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd give it. I'd give it a six. Personally. Out of 30? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard, bro. Out of 10. Okay, okay. Yeah. all right. <laughs> Using math, that's like one out of five. <laughs> so. There are two kinds of people. One that can extrapolate from unfinished data. <laughs> How dare you. Get it out of the How dare you. I'd say I'd probably give it like a four out of ten. Four out of ten. Dad, you you give it a ten out of ten, right? You suggested it. I suggested it. I give it nine point five out of ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. David, what do you give it? I would say. Hmm? <laughs> What's the half point for? 
Probably Vietnam story. Oh, yeah. Vietnam? Yeah. 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 Maybe like a six, not a seven. Yeah, 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 six. yeah. yeah. six. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's <laughs> one... It's definitely dated to the era oh, it was yeah. written in, yeah. okay? Can you imagine going and getting a drink for 50 cents, right? Oh, wow. But, <laughs> oh, and on that note, the references to a lot of the, I guess you could call them presidential cultural jokes, I, yeah. that I didn't really understand. No, I didn't either, because I'm like, wait, I don't even know who was president like, at the time of this uh, book being written. My assumption is that most of the presidential jokes were aimed at Nixon. Nixon I think. But That's I what I was know. getting too, yeah, but I don't know like for sure. 74 era. Yeah. Yeah. I think I looked it up when the this book was published. I think it was around Nixon. Yeah. Time. That was my yeah. guess, but yeah. it wasn't. It's safe. It's a yeah, safe guess. It, yeah, but but again, yeah, I didn't get the jokes yeah. because I wasn't part of that era. Yeah. Probably I even, very I funny at the time. Get they're making jokes now. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't follow the president. Yeah. Uh, All right. All so the a, jokes is just a, a six, a nine point five, a four, four, a six. Yeah. Megaline, six point five. All right, Brandon. Um, since when did we start? No, we've Brandon. done that. We've, no, we've done it. We've done it. We haven't done it like gone around and everyone. No, no. Yeah. It's not tradition, but yeah. sometimes we'll throw but some numbers in. Actually, if you listen to them, we've done it more often than yeah. you think. <laughs> I listen to them all. I <laughs> okay, you got to listen to them. Why your numbers Second. are so high? <laughs> uh, um, I, 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 I'm with Wayne, 9.5. Justin? I give it a 5. I give it a 50. Give or take. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. Okay. I can take it. Recommend? Yes. Any final thoughts? Some of us recommend. Final Soft thoughts? Soft recommendation. You wouldn't be in a bad way to read it, but don't go out your way to find it. It was kind of hard for me to find. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I would like Although to. Although I, I don't use Audible, so probably right, that's easy. Right. Well, and I could get it on Kindle just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got mine on Kindle and read I it. Usually, so there you go. Yeah. When I buy it, I usually buy it on Kindle and he gets it on Audible. Kindle. Sometimes when we get it on Kindle, the Audible's free because it's connected. That's it cool. just depends. Mm -hmm. Because he has Audible, so oh, okay. and we share a Kindle library. So sometimes I buy that hardcover. I buy hard copies of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so recommend. Don't recommend. We know what the next one is. I right? recommend it. Yeah. Of course, you recommend it. You recommended it for book club. Yes, I <laughs> so did. So we only have one more. One well, book left. I would, hard I would have to admit well, what, that yeah. if they came out with a TV show based off of this. I would give it a chance. Yeah, I would too. I would too. I'd love yeah. to see yeah. it televised. I think I would enjoy it more televised. Yes. I watched a playthrough for the video game. Like, there's fun stuff you can do storyline wise. It was, it was basically like a DOS game, right? Like, it's that old. Kind of thing. <laughs> oh, wow. no, no, it's a point yeah. and click. Like, there's graphics. No, I, but I mean, like, it's, it's like Mist or. Yeah. Or, yeah. or if the, there are, the pirate, I'll, I'll throw this out there. Pirate game. Yeah. yeah. If there are any TV producers listening to this and want to do a show, I recommend Wayne Abraham for the role of Doc. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a hell of a voice. The man could narrate anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The dictionary. All right. So, <laughs> so the, next the next book is oh, The What's Devil the in the White City by Eric Larson. Eric Larson. Okay. Not you, Savage La a Dragon Eric Larson, but no. the other <laughs> uncool comic yes, book the creator. The Devil in the White Eric City Larson. is my recommendation. And I will say, listener, it is a nonfiction book instead of a fiction book. I think it's the first one we've done. Is it our first nonfiction? I think so. I, I, I think it might be. Yeah. yeah. yeah we do a lot I think of we fiction. do a lot of yeah. Yeah, because we I like say fiction. Good luck. <laughs> David's <laughs> already read it, but he'll tell us about it next time. Yes. Bye. 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 Please come back. <laughs> so there you have it. That was our discussion on the Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, really good book. I can't recommend this series enough i went ahead and read um several of the series uh that they had available um on audible hey audible i'd like a sponsorship give me a sponsorship i'll sponsor the sp i'll sponsor the heck out of you um so if if you know message audible on our behalf i don't know how you do that but um the next book is, um, it's a doozy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Not that Eric Larson. Not Savage Dragon Spider-Man Eric Larson. Not the Eric Larson that I got excited about when I heard the name Eric Larson. Some other author named Eric Larson. 
not the creator of Savage Dragon. I got excited. I thought we were going to get a novelization of Savage Dragon just, you know, destroying stuff. Um, but no, it is it is The Devil in the White City by a different Eric Larson, which should be illegal. That's, that's you know, copyright infringement or, you know, false market confusion. Because there's a much more famous Eric Larson out there. Um, I've met him at Comic-Con. Uh, but, you know, you know, it's not like the other Eric Larson didn't run a multi-million dollar publishing company or anything like that. I don't know who this Eric Larson is who wrote The Devil in the White City. But, uh, uh, it is, um, the true story of, uh, H.H. Holmes, the first, uh, serial killer in America as it relates to um, the construction of um, the, uh, uh, I can't even think, the first Ferris wheel in America with the um, uh, American, um, I can't think of the name, the, I just completely blinked right here, live, live on the air. Um, the, uh, nonfiction historical, um, about H.H. H. Holmes and, um, the construction of the first world, America's first world fair. Um, so that's what it was. Yes. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I'm losing my mind slowly because of the heat. It's like 108 in here and, uh, I'm going to call it a day and, and take a cold shower. But, uh, I, I hope you enjoyed our discussion on Callahan's cross time saloon. Um, read it, read it. It's really good. It's really good. Um, and, uh, next up we will be discussing the devil in the white city. All right. See you next time.